Yeah, I think my hardest years in the industry were the earlier years, not because I was not even getting paid, but because I was very insecure in what I had to offer. And I always say that's one of the, like, I'm really glad I am over that stage of shukuing. Kai, am I really a good actor? Am I really? Nowadays, like, I'm aware that there's so much more to be done. Mm -hmm. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Art Scene Show. My name is Chepto Boyo, and today we have Nyokafi Masharia. She's an actor and a director. Welcome to the show, Nyokafi. Thank you so much. Karibu sana. Thank you for having me. Yani on a holiday, mimi uyo ni mekusumbua ukam. Manze. Haki kasema, nizipo kuja leo zita kuja. Imagine, ungu kuja tena. Hadi next year, sasa. Hadi next year. Karibu sana kwa show. Thank you, thank you. So, Nyokafi. Yes. Tell us about your family. Uh, so, I come from a... Ukisama family of two, what do you actually mean? That you, it's two kids or what? Meaning only your parents. Oh, okay. Anyway, so I have my mom and dad. And mm-hmm. then I have one sister that I know of. Where is it? Easy streets. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's quite a close-knit family. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, where did you grow up in this country? Oh, I grew up in Nakuru City! I'm such a champion by the way for Nakuru. Um, born and raised in Nakuru and then I went to school in Desa University, Athi River. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you pursue in Desa? Public relations. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so I pursued public relations. I was meant to do electronic media actually, which is more of like broadcasting and in the editing world. Hey. First semester nikaona watu wanakimbisha na huku na kamera nikauliza what course is this kulikuwa watu na watu wanaka stressed all the time i asked what course is this electronic media ah okay nikatoka that's how i took electronic media Imagine like nunge hack i i was like he was editing you know that people are sad yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are i sad. said hii ni gani haihitaji stress mingi little did i know public relations now had a lot of writing and yeah. i don't enjoy that so nearly push through anyway i made <laughs> have it have you through. practice it i do i think i practice it in like my admin work mm-hmm. um so i'm very particular with like my packaging and even how i send my emails in terms of my language and things like that so i can't say i done this idea sana and even being a producer um when i when i have my shows or even when it comes to graphics i'm very particular with like what i want and stuff like that so yeah i have practiced it uh huh yeah so how did you get into acting Wow. So first of all, I've always been that uh, drama fest kid, right? Ah, okay. Always in drama festivals and arts thingies. And then uh but I grew up being told that, you know, arts is not it's not like a career. Yeah, it's just something that you do on the side. But then I feel like this I really changed my mentality um because there were a lot of alumni who had prospered in the media scene and i was like oh my goodness this is actually something that can happen i i would see like singers and like actors who have just akina ya face akina joyce and you're being told these guys were in desta and you're like ah if these guys were in desta <laughs> see even us we can make it so desta really provided i i keep saying desta more than it it was less of the certificate and the education that i got there yeah and it was more of the community because up to date my contacts in the media my contacts in like various fields a lot of them are from daystar university so uh-huh. that really daystar did that for me yeah so more like alumni yes okay. yes yeah then uh, mm. i think i read online mm-hmm. you took a break from acting mm. went to the uk yes at royal central school London. Yes. To do I think is it masters in acting? Yes, yeah, so I did a uh, masters in music theater. Mm-hmm. Um so essentially I had actually applied for school in I think 2018 mm-hmm. and I had applied to two schools. I got rejected in one and the other one would only take me in for acting, mm-hmm. but I wanted music 
theater. So I said, you know what, I'm going to wait for the next year. And then we did Tinga Tinga Tales, the musical. And I remember the director, Claudia Lloyd, who is from the UK, was like, you know, Nyokafi, I think you should, you know, you should take like a conservatory program or whatever. And I was like, funny enough, I've been thinking of that. And she's like, there's actually this school that is close to my place. It's called Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. And I was like, okay. This time I'm only going to apply to one school. If I get in, that's if that's I don't get in, it's a sign. But to a challenge. But if I get in, well and good. And so I got in and I really, really wanted to do the whole package of like singing, dancing and acting. So that's why I rejected the opportunity to go to was it Mount View for acting only? Yeah. yeah. So was it self sponsored or um, I got a, I, I was nominated. So what happens is you can apply for scholarships, but then there are scholarships where you're nominated by the faculty in the school. Uh -huh. And so after my audition, I was nominated by the faculty to get a major scholarship. And I was sponsored by one Cameron McIntosh, who this name is a very big deal in the UK because he owns a lot of theaters there and he's just like someone who's really big in the in the entertainment industry and so they sponsored essentially half of my school fees yeah Oh, wow. Yeah. So in terms of accommodation and yeah. just money to spend there, was that yes, so new? It's so new? Yo, I used <laughs> to be on student budget. For, well, let me tell you, I worked as a front of house staff at a theater called Hampstead Theater. And so I, where? Life is expensive in London. Let me tell you. Hey, nearly quite to say my Mama yangu akwap. And you know, let me tell you, your parents cannot sustain you there, no. like there. And you know, parents' money it's never enough. So it was that student budget ile for sure, for sure. And then one thing that happens in the UK is that when you uh, when you have a student visa, you can only work for a certain number of hours. So even ah. if I wanted to earn more money, I you couldn't cannot work because I, I, I wow. cannot work past. I would only be allowed to work for 20 hours a week. And you see now your salary comes in uh, per hour, per hour. So it yeah. used to frustrate me. I'm like, I want money. <laughs> but the government is reasoning you. You are here to make money or you are here to study. To, to study yeah. So it was, th that was really frustrating, but we made it through. So, and also the theater was literally opposite my school. So it wasn't too hard, but it was a crazy schedule. I come in to school at like seven in the morning and I leave at um, like around five. So I have like a break and then at six 30, I've clocked in work and then I'm leaving work at like 10, 30, 11. The cycle repeats. Yeah, niyako will go to well. proper work study. Proper. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that was the it kabisa. It was it was a lot, but it it really taught me where like to appreciate home. Yeah, I feel like yeah. home. There's such a working culture over there that's a bit toxic. You, you actually do not enjoy life. You don't enjoy life. Or you don't have time to enjoy exactly. life. Exactly. You're always working, or you're always in school, or you're always. Like here, there's time to, even when you're working, there's time to enjoy things. There's that communal yeah. aspect. So it really made me appreciate home mm -hmm. and the flexibility that we have here at home. Uh -huh. Yeah. So how was the treatment of you as an African there? Let me tell you, first of all, I have never considered myself as a black person. Not that at the, I think I'm white. Mm -hmm. We never refer to each other as black people. No. No, because all of us are black. So... Yes no one actually says oh you're it's a person a of color deal. it's not a it's not a thing even yeah so it was very strange for me to go into the other side and all of a sudden i'm a person of color or i'm a black person i'm just like i'm just a person yeah, yeah. so that was very it was and and also i was the only black person in my class mm -hmm. so there are conversations where even if you tried to have them no one understands and as politically correct as all the students want to be in the class there's no understanding because sometimes, even in class, you just want to nudge someone and be like, did you hear what that person said? Yeah. So there is no one to be like, you know that can, can, can nudge and you're like, hey, okay, you. oh, okay. <laughs> so it was very hard for me to like sort of find my footing. And even when we come to the material in class, it was very... 
I feel like music theater is very white centered and it's only recently that now they've started incorporating black people and I remember even when we were having um a unit called uh the auditioning no not the auditioning unit it was uh so it was uh, a unit where you present your work and agents come to see you so that they can you know spot people and stuff like that and I remember struggling to find a song that suits my voice you know mm-hmm. uh because a lot of you know music theater especially for the leads it's more soprano and yeah. alto is like we were in the second nini uko so even and also to even find a song that i resonate with that was very dif- difficult for me and so i noticed that there is there's like a big gap over there in terms of who music theater is for and how like is it becoming more accessible is it becoming more relatable to people you know so that was a, that was a very interesting discovery for me mm. yeah okay yeah. back to kenya now yes you are the co-founder of yes. shot from africa yes tell us more about that organization oh so shots from africa was actually started when i was back in the uk and it's lockdown we're all just trying to create and just be in a creative space and so charles ouda calls me and he says there's this friend of his that is doing something is working with uh, an organization called balcony arts and they just used to stream um like live performances on instagram and they say they're coming to do a kenyan edition and yeah. he was like are you interested and i was like absolutely nice githinji was also part of that as well and i remember thinking now after so when we're having the r- virtual rap party for the whole balcony arts thing yeah nice mentioned an idea she said you know i've always thought about my life in crime as like short short uh what is uh, short films and i would want to do them one day and i thought my goodness that is a brilliant idea so the next day i texted her i was like your idea about my life in crime if you don't do it i'm going to do it so i'm giving you the courtesy of let's do it together <laughs> uh because if you don't do it i i'm, I'm going to do it and right now i don't think i have access to short films and people who can shoot so i suggest can we just do can you go with a format that balcony arts had and so we approached now balcony arts and we were like we actually want to do this thing and they were like yeah sure <laughs> then after my life in crime we were like my goodness we could actually have our own company and we were like yeah okay so let's do it and then we organized um i think two more editions after that and for the for our last online audition we got people from various countries um like 10 countries and stuff and it was really interesting to see um so we gave them a prompt and we asked them like to have meetings over one week and come up with something at the end of the week and the prompt was um is it possible for you to write stories from a place that you're not from and it's the whole conversation of can mm-hmm. white people write for black people uh-huh. and so what we wanted to explore with this experiment is can we actually create without any judgment without trying to be politically correct about how these people cannot relate and one of the most amazing things to come out of that conversation was or like the beauty the works that came out of that uh, those sort of workshops what we discovered is that at the core of it all we are all human yeah we have all experienced heartbreaks love you know pain everything and so that was such a powerful thing for us as artists to just put our judgment aside because i think yeah. even me as a person i'm very i always want to be politically <laughs> correct and be like no you cannot write our stories <laughs> but that really humbled me that really humbled me and it was an open question we weren't saying that this is the answer we didn't have an answer we just wanted to explore what does that look like and yeah. the performances the pieces that came out of that were absolutely brilliant and then this year we had our very first in person production it was called how to have an affair ah! at shit has died <laughs> <laughs> spicy <laughs> very spicy uh-huh. my goodness what a highlight was that was of my year i mean the w- the conversations like when nice actually she's the one who came up with that mm-hmm. idea and came with the script and i was like i don't know you were not sure how i was like Ay, what are we going to <laughs> i was like you know what let's do it mm-hmm. and it was one of the most brilliant things ever the conversations that came out of that production yeah. was um were i just like at some point to a talk every show someone is the, with their partner and then she comes like ulolela patuli sema hivi na hivi na hivi hebu mwambie i'm just like i'm not here to solve family problems yeah, that's why i'm just giving you scenarios so that was really really fascinating okay yes 
You just won. Yes. Best lead actress yeah. Kalasha Awards 2022. Woo! Yeah, Woo! Woo! cool. <laughs> what does that award mean to you? Oh man. I don't know. It uh, gosh. It's unreal because I this year specifically I kept on saying me I want a Kalasha. I just want a Kalasha. I mean, like yes I want an Oscar and all those things. Lakini nataka watu wangu kwanza wani recognize. Yeah. And there are a lot of friends I've had this conversation with and they're like imagine a Kalasha is not all that. Imagine it's just and I said let it be not all that while it is in my house. I want it while it is in my house. So it's it was a great great feeling to you know be recognized uh, amongst your peers and you know in a field that you consider yourself to be an expert in and you feel now other experts are saying i yeah by the you did a good job yeah so that was very it was a very humbling experience for me and i i you know i hope it opens other opportunities and i think even in terms of like platforms that i get to speak on i because i'm really big on issues that affect actors in the industry and stuff and so one of my biggest things just in life um that i would love to be part of is you know policy making and i hope that this opens up doors uh for me to be in spaces where i can actually speak on such things and learn as well yeah. on such things so yeah Mm-hmm. Yes. Now you play Ivy yes. on Country Queen. Yes. How has been the feedback so far? Oh my gosh, people meet me and they're just like, "You're such a brat. You're such a spoiled brat." <laughs> and I'm like, "It's not me." <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been amazing. Um and I just love how Kenyans have they're so proud that we have you know a whole series on Netflix global that people actually get to see you don't have to tell someone you need a vpn and yeah. then just your warning uh, uh, yeah uh, 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 it's uh, like uh, you can get it and even yeah. if i was, i wanted to speak to an agent who is outside i can be like yeah you can find my work on netflix and what a, that's such a boost you know to my self esteem as an actor in this in this world and i feel like now i'm on this i'm I'm with my peers on a global scale. I'm yeah. not just this actor from It's Kenya. now a leveled field. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it feels really nice and Yani the number of Kenyans that I mean like, oh my god you're Ivy right <laughs> and the pride that they have is just it's so beautiful to see that you know like I know the way we keep saying Kenyans don't support their own and which is you know it has some truth to it yeah. but you really find Kenyans who are so especially this year I've really encountered a lot of Kenyans who are so enthusiastic about Kenyan content yeah. and I'm like my goodness like more than us even and they'll come up to you and tell you all these storylines and you're like damn I don't even watch <laughs> it that much but thank you so it's been a very very great experience mm-hmm. yeah out of all the programs mm-hmm. you've featured in yeah which one do people recognize you from the most wow so um i would say <sighs> it it depends with periods because now in when it was like selena time because it's in maisha magic east and i was very surprised actually the people that watched that, that watch um selena because it was like sewa smoky msewa mama mboga ama driver wa matatu and i was so shocked i thought people that watch selena are like the middle class Middle class do not watch us at all. <laughs> at least is on wanna shuguline us. So I was very surprised and also I I realized that it's very accessible to a lot of people which caught me by surprise. I didn't know that. Uh because you see with Showmax and Netflix it's that's a, I think now that's where the middle class lie. Yeah. And these are the people now I'll meet in concerts, the the people I'll meet in what and sometimes in the malls and stuff like that. So I'd say Selena is the one that had like like exposed me to like a massive massive audience which i didn't i, I, I yeah you didn't expect i didn't expect it i was so shocked i'd be like <laughs> wait you watch selena yeah 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 and they'll tell you the whole storyline so, selena had loyalists it really had yeah me i was so shocked i was like wow i'm, I'm proud and shocked at the same time mm. so yeah now uh you've just talked about selena yeah how did you hack a swahili program 
<sighs> na hii kingereza yako hapa let me tell you with jesus <laughs> half of the time when i was in selina i was just trying to remember hiyo kimsamiati ni nini jamani i was thinking and my scene part by thinking my goodness what is that word and it's interesting what selina taught me actually is what's the role that language plays in um like uh pieces and stuff so you'll find as an actor that when you're most comfortable in a role is you speaking the long, the language that you're most comfortable in yeah. so even if you're born in Kenya you might it might be that kikuyu is the language that you're most comfortable in yeah. and you'll find even in terms of how you're bringing out the role those are the best roles and stuff that said i found a way of coping with like cuz selina had like swahili like some and deep proper dialogue proper swahili <laughs> So every day on set I used to do something called word for the day. And people used to think that I'm joking around with it, but it's my way of like registering that word in my mind because you'll find you doing very many takes. And the more I repeat the word, the more I can remember it, the more the vocabulary is sitting well yeah. in my mind, in my head, in my mouth. And so I used to be like, "Oh, what's the meaning of this?" and I'd go and do instagram stories and go to the crew and be like word for the day kujishebedua kujishebedua maisha nini ha so that's how i would like get those vocabularies in my head and in my mouth so that i can pronounce them correctly and stuff like that that said it was a struggle for me proper yeah yeah Then we saw you mm-hmm. on My Empress. Yes. You had all these beautiful dreadlocks. Yes. <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> What happened? Uh, let me tell you. So, I I went I went to the UK with my dreadlocks. And retouching dreadlocks in the UK is so expensive. And remember I was running on a student budget. So I mean ile kwa zile za eh ni kwa ngena spend cg 70 pounds to do my dreadlocks that's like what mm-hmm. like 8000 9000 mm-hmm. i'm like and then also remember i was in a very physical course i'm mm-hmm. dancing throughout the day so i'm sweating throughout yeah. the day we used to have something called body conditioning which is like working out every monday wednesday and friday so and then dreadlocks ikipata to sweat kidogo zishatokana i was yeah. like what is the point of this <laughs> and also so if i've made up my dreadlocks i don't want to I don't want to wash it when I go yeah, you but now if I I've, I've been dancing the whole day so I really Again. want to wash my hair wow. and remember I'm coming back home at like what 11:30 at night so by the time I wash my hair and then I dry it and I still want to sleep and I'm still waking up at ah I was like this is a lot of stress that said I really had been thinking about shaving my dreadlocks but those circumstances were just an extra motivation for me to do it and I was like chop it off was the point Nikazi weka chini. So ziko mali roaming around in the streets of London because I was like sasa nikirudi nazo kwa ndege si watadhani mimi ni mchawi. So I just left them somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so I had yes. you went to Nyegenyege festival. Oh gosh. <laughs> Where <laughs> did you hear this? Nilingia hapo hivi online. Nikaona. Did it live up to the expectation? Oh man. You know I keep saying I think Nyegenyege was uh it was a, I had a very good experience mm-hmm. but also it was south so it was both um to the ends of the spectrum yes <laughs> so it was very fun I think it's like it was a great one time experience for me mm-hmm. would I do it again maybe in like five years when I'm super rich I have a driver I have people to do things for me you can carry security yeah <laughs> By the way, you know, you need to be security. There's a guy. Vitu zake zilibiwa akiwa amelala ndani ya the kennels. You heard about the kennels. <laughs> his okay. laptop, his camera, his w- I felt so bad for the guy. It was Oh no. Yeah. That's it. I really had a good time and it's always so nice to be in an environment where there's people from different places of the world and bonding over music like it reminds you how big music is and also we were just showering in the river nile it what an experience <laughs> really what, dipping, well, yes. let me tell you unaenda sasa na ka costume you would go with your costume unaweka ka shower gel una una josh una unaenda deeper alafu una josh shower hivi unavaa costume unatokelea hivi nje and you know at first i went there like oh my god where are the showers by day two 
Ah, mimi nilikuwa naenda huko na migutupu. <laughs> Let me tell you, and alafu nakum we didn't have like proper toilets. So everywhere, everywhere is a toilet. No way. Let me tell you if there's a day I bo- if there's a uh, time I bonded with mother nature. It was it, it was that day. Uh, Paka remember when we were coming back and mm-hmm. tukabusia nikaona toilets nikasema na hizi zilikuwa zinafanyanga nini? <laughs> What were the toilets for? <laughs> really if you think about it, toilets are overrated so it was it was a great great one so, time. So when you say you are bonding with mother nature, what hey, were guys just doing it there or was it flying toilets where you No, it wasn't flying toilets. Flying toilets. Like you know when you go to the <laughs> like ukisikia nini toilets go all the way why and then tuko kakachom una squat fanya maneno yako anaoka na uende and you're like ai well you know the apple don't really realize mungu alikuwa ametutengenezea sisi ndio tuliharibu maneno because I'm going to fertilize kweli kule if you go to those grounds those are fertile grounds proper <laughs> So it was it was a great <laughs> adventure. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. So are you single? But <laughs> oh, dating. Which one of the three? <laughs> this is the first time I've been asked this question. Because I got pick a box. Where 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 where? Jesus. That's a very interesting question. <laughs> Usinge chini ya table usinge. Kwa hapa tu bado. Hey, it depends who is asking. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Now how do people answer these questions? Me I'm a human being <laughs> <laughs> existing in the world. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I decline. Can I take can I plead the fifth? <laughs> you can plead the fifth. <laughs> no, but I'm single, that's it. Okay. I am single, yes. So, since you're single, yes. What kind of a person yeah are you looking for? Oh dear. Or not necessarily even looking, looking for. for when you at least what kind of a person you? is yeah. your dream person? Like mm. qualities. Um first and foremost a kind person. Mm-hmm. Um I am very keen on how someone treats other people because wewe we atakutii tu vizuri because you know anakukatia anajaribu kuinsha box but um the way they treat other people speaks a lot yeah. to how yeah. they're going to treat me when things are not so well you know they're not going so well between us um I also love um someone who is ambitious si penangi mtu amelalia tu masikio <laughs> ah wale wale wanachokesha sana ah, <laughs> because I'm equally an ambitious person and I I want to feel like we, to go in the same wavelength you know yeah. like let's let's uh, chochana and stuff like that mm-hmm. um and someone who loves to have fun cuz honey yeah. I love to have a good time okay <laughs> I try to be like what so I someone who like actually the more one of the most important someone who's secure in themselves whether unaosha cho ama wewe ni unafanya ganini like i really i i love someone who is secure in themselves i think it's such an attractive quality it's, it's sexy it's so sexy yeah. and also being a very outspoken woman and you know like that kind of person i don't want someone who is making me feel like i'm doing too much cuz i'm going to be too i'm going to be doing too much for the rest of my life okay <laughs> or so, the one or the one to cap you exactly so that you do not go so that you do, no 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 <laughs> i don't i i want someone who's like baby i love how you shining and baby i want to be there for you okay mm-hmm. and so someone who doesn't feel like at am out shining them and whatever so yeah those are some of the like the three very important things Well, yes. I know it's more than three. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I could listen forever. <laughs> Because my mom is always like, "Hey, wewe, when you atakupata, I'm like, yes, 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 but anyway, yeah. yeah. No, he will come. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, yeah, at your journey in the industry. Mm-hmm. How has it been? Oh, man. If you were to summarize it all, it's been it's been an exciting journey. Mm-hmm but it's also been a very long journey there's so many times i i i just felt hopeless i felt like 
am I even doing the right thing? And especially the earlier, I think my hardest years in the industry were the earlier years, not because I was not even getting paid, but because I was very insecure in what I had to offer. And I always say that's one of the, like, I'm really glad I am over that stage of shukuing. Kai, am I really a good actor? Am I really? Nowadays, like, I'm aware that there's so much more to be done. Mm -hmm. But I'm also confident in what I bring to the table. I'm confident in my skill as an actor. And I think that has been one of my most oh, liberating feelings ever. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's been a very exciting journey because I feel like I've for my age, I've really done a lot and especially worked with a lot of people that I admire. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. hey, but also the struggles have struggled because uh, I think even um, beginning of my career, I think I worked for free for like three years. Eesh. And my mom was just supporting and she was just like, like I get what you're doing, but God damn it, get us something. Get, get, get some <laughs> money, girl. So that was, that was long. That was long. So I'm, I, I feel very grateful. Very, very grateful to be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, You've, you, you've done a lot of theater plays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which one would you say is the best and the worst? Ooh, you're going to put me in trouble. <laughs> oh, my God. Oof. Okay, 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 okay. One of my best experiences in theater was um, Too Early for Birds Brazen edition. Mm. And why that was such... Uh, a huge moment for me is because one, I was playing women that actually existed and people that we consider to be heroes and they are part, they're a huge part of our history and like what an honor and Field Marshal Mudoni even came for the show and I was like, yeah. I was so humbled. I was just bawling my eyes out after the, after the show. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was also playing five roles in that. Hey. I know, but it was like, yes, I love such challenges. Like it really, and I was dancing and I was singing in that. And I was just like, oh, yes. Who are the five women you're playing? I was playing Zarina Patel. I was playing Mekatilili Wamenza. I was playing Wangu Wamakeri. Um, I was playing Nandi Girl. And, and the fifth one, Nandi Field Girl. Marshall was, is the fifth. No, I wasn't playing Field Marshall. Damn it, I forget. I forget the other one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, can, I was playing for maybe Najichocha, but yeah, those are the four <laughs> that I can remember. <laughs> and another really highlight of mine in theater was this year, we did Spread Your Garment, um, which was like based on the on the stories of women in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just have a thing for women. Yeah, women empowerment. But yeah, <laughs> another reason why I really love that <laughs> is I was playing such different roles. Mm -hmm. I was playing a witch, I was playing Mama Moshene. I was playing that girl who is, you know, Anna Anna Gossip Piariwa with like the peers and stuff. And you know, that's that's the sad girl and whatever. Mm -hmm. And all of them really came together. And also I was playing um I was part of like a chorus of women who were supporting Deborah and it was like a warrior feel. And I just felt so powerful on that stage. I was like, Eesh. I could do this, I could do range, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's some range. And so as an actor, I look forward to things that really just get expand me. Expand you. Expand me and like get me out of that comfort zone of just standing. I think one of the reasons that TV sometimes is exhausting is you're just there. You're just there. You're just like, oh, and then you cannot do extra. You, oh, dear <laughs> Lord. <laughs> and then you say, oh, Lord. You know, with theater, you can make, you can add, you can keep adding things and every show is different and whatever. With TV, you can take one, continue to make a and you've already, we've just got an idea of, ah, I would really love to do this. So sometimes TV is a bit nini, but also that's a whole other skill yeah. by itself. Yeah. About the worst production, I don't think I can see that. <laughs> Why? You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> hey, what's your bad way? I've had my fair share. Where, 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 where? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. 
Ah, you was si wezi kuambia hiyo. Hiyo hey. nione kando. Hiyo you, you have to pay me to tell you. Sawa <laughs> tuto side bar. <laughs> oh yes, and also sorry. Tinga Tinga was also a really good. Oh yeah. Like, I watched I watched that. That actually. was monumental for me in terms of how professional theater actually happens. You know, that whole 6 week rehearsal period and it's from 8 to 5 and all of you are dancing and singing and again, I think I just love roles that really demand so much of me. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do you have yes. a dream role yeah. you would like to play? Ah, oh, a dream role I would love to play. I'd love to play a biographical role. So, someone who has existed in history and yeah, I think those are some of the things that I really yearn for nowadays and especially if it's a Kenyan story, even if it's not a Kenyan story really. I would I would love 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 to play a, a, hist- a historical biographical role. Uh-huh. Yeah. So like a a mekatilili a mekatilili over there a congestina or chieng you know even though I'm not luo how cool would it be to learn luo for that kind of thing and get the muscles you know exactly <laughs> you so I I would I would really I would enjoy that mm. yeah yeah that's so cool aha yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> what are some of the projects yes. you have directed Oh wow. So there was have, how to have an affair um mm-hmm. by Shots from Africa which was starring Nice Kidenji and Charles Oda and then I did an online um directing thing by a company called Octopus Theatricals which is based in New York and they had a partnership with Abu Dhabi so we were doing like a um an online based project they came up they came up with a new technology of how to do it, the project was called theater for one mm-hmm. and so the format of it is that the performer would only perform for one audience member at a time mm-hmm. through the screen and it's not zoom it's not google meet it was a very brilliant technology and so well thought out mm-hmm. um and then for my final project in uni i directed a scene from frankenstein and i gender swapped the adaptation so essentially frankenstein is a story between um, um the creature and the doctor right it's like yeah. a scientist who comes up with this whole human being but out of chemicals and stuff and so both of them are men so the original roles are played by men but i thought hmm how would this look like if it were women so i gender swapped and i had women play that and i directed this online as well um and my whole team was in kenya at the time na mimi niko it was during i think lockdown and mimi niko tu hapo directing through a screen and this is my first time and uh, yeah so those are some of the things that have been really amazing to direct mm-hmm. yeah who would you love to work with in this industry wow ha Recently so um Eugene Bogwa post a photo of like he, he had gone for the launch of Q and something like that and Kenambani was there and I thought my goodness I have watched this guy since I was young and at that moment I said in fact I even posted it on Instagram and I was like I would love to get on screen with this guy like people who are there uko tene ukimjuanga ka baraza ukimjuanga ka baraza like <laughs> that cannot even leave my mind yeah. so anyone who like was there before mm-hmm. us and has been doing this for decades for me that's just like i just want to be on a set with you mm-hmm. i was recently on a set with uh, mukami njiru and she played lupita's mother in sugar that's one of the roles but i ve- i found out she was also in tausi i was like what do you mean <laughs> like i was just like oh my god this is history happening yeah. here mm-hmm. and ha like you can tell the seasoning of these actors need yeah. to is it you kufunzwa no ni age na experience and i'm just like i just just brush over me i just want some, some. of that <laughs> so it's amazing to be on a set with like people who've done this for years done it all seen it all mm-hmm. but still their minds are are there so yeah Mm-hmm. Yes. County 49. Yes. Your most recent project. Yes. Now you play uh Debbie the ex-wife yes. to Malik. Peter Kawa. Yes. Malik who's Peter Kawa. Yes. Did you have to do any research for that role? Um so first of all the the turnaround between um auditioning 
And then starting production was like this little. And I keep saying, I think one of the biggest issues we have in this country is that we don't have enough pre-production time. And that's because, you know, productions or the executive producers or the people who are in charge of this money, they're not willing to spend money on pre-production. Yeah. And even training sometimes. And training. I keep saying that's one of the most crucial things in production. But the money peoples, the money makers, who could do experience so i i cannot wait for that time when pre production ni like two months so not just like a workshop here and there because that's what we currently do anyway that said um for me my biggest thing with debra was having a lot of conversations with the director because um again there's something the Karen used to tell us don't choose a character that's so far away from you as a person because it's a it's sort of a long-term series right you're gonna be here for three months and whatever and if you take that route it's it sometimes like you're losing your, yourself for three not even months. losing yourself because we're also shooting out of sequence it's gonna be hard to be consistent throughout uh-huh. especially if you haven't taken time to build that mm-hmm. character to build a whole other you know sort of human being with different mannerisms so he was just like it's going to be really inconsistent so for me i was just trying to find like small small nuggets that i can be able to infuse into the character mm-hmm. that i would be able to be consistent with mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of conversations with the director, a lot of conversations with my co-stars. For me, that really helps. Um, and also, I try, I try to build a character like on a notebook, just trying to write down, oh, this is what they like, or this is what they're about, or this is what da 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 da. So yeah, and writing down their, you know, their backstories and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, County Forty Nine yes. is a political thriller. Yes. Taking that context mm-hmm. from TV mm-hmm. to now. Kenya, the country. Yeah. Where do counties go wrong? Wow. That's a very interesting question. Where do <laughs> counties go wrong? Mm-hmm. Or what are some of the things mm. the counties are doing mm. that is not helping we, the people? Mm. You can even take your hometown county. Mm. Nakuru. Nakuru County. First of all, because the leadership is like women all over, which is amazing. <laughs> I swear, I see can't even get you girls. So, what are they not doing? Honestly, I don't think I have information enough to like speak on this. I I don't know where it is that we are going wrong. I don't know where the money gets lost. And also, I think in terms of um, arts, culture, and entertainment and stuff, maybe it's the people that we put in these offices that probably have no interest whatsoever yeah. when it comes to, I'll, sp- I'll specifically speak on arts and entertainment. You're putting someone who has no background whatsoever yeah. in the arts, but they're like, oh, no, 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 but they're good in this. And so I think it might start with like, who are we selecting to be in these offices? Yeah. And do they actually have a genuine interest in arts and these kind of things? So... Yeah, that's one of the things I would say. But in terms of the whole, I, I don't think I'm knowledgeable enough to speak on that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. How hard mm-hmm. or easy mm-hmm. will you say it is to cover a niche for yourself in this industry? Well, hey. Yeah, exclamation. What are <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what you <to> toy easy? <laughs> How hard is it? <laughs> well, Honestly, I think it varies. Mm. I think it varies. I I know people speak about, you know, it's not luck, it's hard work. But I think I think there is a bit of luck here yeah. and there. Yeah. There's a bit of it's who you know sometimes. It's the networks that you make. Your network is your net worth. That is said all the time. And that is so true in this industry. Yeah. And you see, the good or bad thing about our industry. Sometimes it even has to do with your personality, with your looks. Mm -hmm. And so by the time you get to a point where you figured out, Mm -hmm. my look fits this Mm -hmm. and my personality fits this. So where can I sort of carve that niche? Because when you get into the industry, it's almost as if you just want to put your, your, your foot in everything. Yeah. And by the time you figure out this is my thing, it might take a minute. 
Mm-hmm. And so that's why I can't I can't really speak on is it how hard or how easy is it? Sometimes you just you really just know the right people. And even if you've put in so much and um this conversation I'm having it after we've already had the hard work conversation. That's that's foundational, yeah. right? Like that's uh, that's the foundation of this conversation. It's that you really need to put in the work. Yeah. But even after you put in the work, I think it's important for us to remember that networking is important. So sometimes in Amanisha, you are privileged enough to afford a ticket to go to such and such a thing. So yeah. you who you're not privileged enough, how can you make sure that you're also getting these? Yeah. Even if you can't. In these rooms. Yes, in these rooms and circles. Sometimes, Unapata, some people just get employment because of how they speak and interact with people. And I keep saying, Vitukama auditions, let me tell you, they rarely have anything to do with your talent. <laughs> Out. Yes, you will be talented, <laughs> but sometimes they're just looking for a certain look. Mm-hmm. They're looking for chemistry between you and another person. Mm-hmm. And the minute I understood that when I get rejected at an audition, it has nothing to do with my talent, life became so much easier for me. It's not a personal thing. It is not a personal thing at all. Because sometimes I want to cast sisters. I, You're so good. You're so mm-hmm. talented. But you guys don't look alike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you've got to look alike. So there's so many factors to be, you know, he success at a situation. When you figure out, at one by the way, at one But it's, I think it's just trial and error. Mm-hmm. It's trial and error. Trying to just see, okay, is it working here? No, it's not. Okay, let me try this. Let me try this. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We said earlier, mm-hmm. you are a musician. Yes. Uh, are you looking to drop some singles? Where? <laughs> <pew, pew, pew, laughs> <laughs> Chiki <laughs> <laughs> music aspect. Oh my god. <laughs> Honestly, I've never thought about actually dropping a single or whatever. But anytime I get a role that has singing in it, I love. I enjoy it and I would do it over and over again. So I sing at any opportunity that I get. But I haven't really actively thought about at getting into the music scene. It's not something that has crossed my mind and I'm thinking, "Oh my god, yeah, I'm a, I'm about to drop an album soon, you know, watch out." Peace. So <laughs> yeah, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> to back here for peace. <laughs> peace. <laughs> yeah. What will you say are your future plans? Wow. My future plans. Hey, 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 hey. That's a, that's a loaded question. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very interested in cross-cultural collaboration, which essentially just means collaborating with people who are not from my culture, whether it's um, locally, whether it's internationally. I, I think traveling by itself, without even as I'm traveling for work, it really opens up your mind and opens you up as a human being. And I I want to be in those spaces where it's not just I'm I want to create with my people mm-hmm. absolutely but I also want to see what is out there for me what is out there do I connect with another human being who is in Slovakia or some <laughs> some place that some European country exactly <laughs> that I've never even thought about mm-hmm. I want to see what people are doing in Malawi in Zimbabwe and so I really really um I, I, I hope to create with people that I'm not really familiar with their culture, you know, places that I've never been to. Yeah, these are some of the things that I, I, I hope to do. And I want to be in productions that really stretch me, and um, especially in terms of skills. I want to be in a production that challenges me to, I don't know, like ruka on a scaffolding and what like those kind of things like new things that i haven't experienced before mm. so yeah mm. thank you so much for coming thank you those were such interesting questions some of them i've never been asked before which is amazing so thank you for being such a lovely host karibu karibu tena yes mm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching the episode please subscribe i will see you guys on the next one